This is a cooperative practice called uh, Cullinan Studio. We work, until quite recently, called Edward Cullinan Architects. Ted Cullinan set the practice up in, as a cooperative in 1965, and we've been doing low energy buildings more or less ever since. Uh, initially, we used to do low energy buildings uh, despite the clients' desires, because they were not terribly interested. Uh, now. Uh, of course, it is uh, very important, and the knowledge is growing at a huge speed. Um, but I, as a practice, uh, we have certain exemplars that I can talk about, but I think that we also need to think about uh, reducing demand as well as making the buildings, uh, at the same time as making the buildings more energy efficient. So you need to make the fabric really effective, uh, so that you. Uh, so you don't need the heat uh, or the coolth um, before you start fitting uh, technologies onto it. We, we think it's uh, really important to talk to the people that are going to use the building, so we spend a lot of time at the briefing stage talking to them about the buildings they know, preferably their existing building, uh, in order to help us understand what they might want in their new building. Uh, since the users are, uh, conventionally, you only discuss uh, with the managing director or the chairman or the head of uh, uh, property uh, about the future, the brief for the next building, whereas actually uh, the person who manages, the, who looks after the energy or the person who looks after is the receptionist is just as important in terms of the overall success of the building and the way in which it's going to support the business or the activity. I think the biggest challenge is usually uh, carrying the client with you and understanding that uh, we're talking about a whole life value and not first cost. So that the uh, it varies from country to country, but in England it's uh, people want to do something quick and cheap and not worry about the longer term consequence. Uh, whereas, you know, if, you've, if you can pay back the additional costs over five or six years, then it, the whole range of uh, different approaches opens up. So there's a building we did, a, a, a really important building in Cambridge, the Cambridge uh, Centre for Mathematical Sciences. Uh, which we thought when we were designing it, working with the users and other things like that, was uh, one of the most expensive buildings per square metre that we had ever designed. As far as the university was concerned, the Estates Department, it was the cheapest university, uh, its cheapest building in the university, because if you look at it over a whole life period. I think a favourite project of ours is um, uh, a carbon neutral garden city for 60,000 people in an area of high housing need in eastern Libya, <laughs> east of Benghazi, which was approved about a week before the revolution. Uh, now the revolution, now things are calming down. Uh, uh, we're hoping t the project will pick up again. Um, and we hear that uh, the locals are very keen because there's such a pressure on housing to get on with it. So that's wonderful because uh, it was a large, large scale and we, what we were bringing to it was an understanding of the, uh, the topography, the local climate and the culture of that part of the world. And uh, that produced a really uh, rich scheme that is completely different from anything that's been built for the last hundred years, but does refer back to the historical uh, period while being entirely contemporary and being carbon neutral. Uh, 
Uh, the future, I can tell you what it's not, which is gratuitous shape making, <laughs> which seems to uh, be the most important thing around the world. And uh, we've got uh, plenty of shape makers ourselves. I think the future of architecture is much quieter, much more ordinary and much more responsive. Uh, and I think the future of architecture in Europe is um, about making much better use of the buildings we've already got than pulling them down and building new ones. An impossible question, um, but I've always loved uh, Corb's La Tourette. Uh, it's just a great, uh, a fantastic composition. Uh, wonderful to walk around. We stayed there for as a family for uh, two nights. Um, the piece was fantastic. It's just a shame it never really worked as a, uh, as, as a monastery because um, the revolution within the Catholic Church uh, meant that it was largely redundant as soon as it was finished.